let x be geometric p, and that's geometric with a capital G, where the geometric distribution is parameterized beginning from 1. Find the probability mass function of y equals x squared, the probability mass function of x going way back to chapter 4 is f sub x of x is equal to p times 1 minus p to the x minus 1 power for x equals 1, 2, etc. So in this particular case, our transformation is y equals g of x equals x squared. We're trying to find the distribution of y given we know that the distribution of x is geometric with a capital G. You may recall that on an earlier slide this problem was worked using the CDF technique. In fact that was the first example that was done. This time it's going to be done using the transformation technique and again the steps will be numbered according to the algorithm given on the previous page. Step one is to find the support of x which is denoted by script A. In this case x can take on the values 1, 2, 3, etc. and there is script A. The second step is to find the probability mass function of x that is given right here so f sub x of x equals p times 1 minus p raised to the x minus 1 power and that is for x equals 1, 2, etc. Step 3 is to determine if y equals g of x which in this particular case is x squared is a one-to-one -one function. And the way that can be done is to draw a graph of x and y. Let's put in the values 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. for x. Well, what does x equals 1 map to? It maps to 1, so the point 1, 1 is on the graph. How about x equals 2? That maps to 4, so the point 2, 4 is on the graph. How about the point 3? 3 maps to 9, so the point 3, 9 is on the graph. And 4 maps to 16, so the point 4, 16 is on the graph, etc. So if you do the vertical line test, you recognize that y equals x squared is a function on the support script A. And using the horizontal line test, you also conclude that y equals x squared is a one-to-one -one function on the support script A. So to conclude, y equals g of x equals x squared is in fact a one-to-one -one function on the support script A. And that leads to step four. Given that it is a one-to-one -one function. It has an inverse and so to determine the inverse you simply solve for x and you get g inverse of y which in this case will be the square root of y and you don't need to worry about any plus or minus here because you have positive uh, integers here as support for script for for the random variable x. Step 5 is to determine the support of the random variable y. That can be seen by the values here on this axis that these are mapped to and they are 1, 4, 9, 16, etc. So script B is the set of all y such that y equals 1, 4, 9, 16, etc. And that is the support of the random variable y. So step six here is to determine the probability mass function of y and using the theorem on uh, two slides ago this will be fx of g inverse of y and that will be 
Look at our fx of x up here. Simply this formula right here with x replaced by the square root of y. So this will be p times 1 minus p raised to the square root of y minus 1 power for y equals 1, 4, 9, etc. Notice that if you were to plug a 1 into here, you would just get p. If you were to plug a 4 into here, you will get p times 1 minus p. And you'll see that on the next page as we draw some pictures. So if you were to look at the distribution of x, here is x, and here is f sub x of x. This will be defined on the integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. And so at x equals 1, you get a spike of height p. And at x equals 2, you get a spike of height p times 1 minus p. And then p times 1 minus p squared, p times 1 minus p cubed, etc. So you get kind of the classic geometric decline here as x increases. Now on the distribution of y using the transformation, so here is y and here is f sub y of y. At y is equal to 1, you in fact get that same spike of height p. But then the next mass value in the support or the next um, support value is 4 and here you get p times 1 minus p. So basically this spike right here is being transferred out to 4 and then the next spike is out here at 9 and that is p times 1 minus p squared and then there's another spike way out here at 16. So the distribution has the same heights of the spikes, but instead of being at the positive integers, it is at the perfect squares.